Mac, here is the antenna video I'm putting together for you that is going to show you how to make a 20 and 40 meter linked dipole. And this is for a QRP installation. Here's what I have for the antenna. I have two halves of the antenna attached to the little plastic um, wire winders that I made. And I made these wire winders from a template from one that I purchased from the, uh, it's a ham radio store online just for QRP and some of it's on the air. Here's what they look like when you buy them. It's worth buying them for the five bucks. It's not worth the effort to make them like I did, but in the early days, I thought I was gonna be creative and make that. So the parts are gonna be the two wire winders that hold either half of the antenna, and I'm using black and red wires. When the wires are the same color, it is way complicated to get it untangled when you're out in the field and the bushes and the stickers are tangling up your antenna. So that's tip number one, two different colors for each leg. There are two halves to this antenna. Each one is going to be about the same. It may change depending on the wire that you use and how high off the ground. So you're gonna have some tuning that's gonna be involved with setting up your antenna. I'm using some 24 gauge alarm wire. The center of the antenna is a female BNC connector on one end and banana connectors on the other. We're not gonna use the banana connectors, but we are gonna use those threaded terminal connectors that will lock down on the inside of the wire. The length of the wire is gonna be for the 20 meter segment is gonna be 16 feet, five and a half inches long. That's for the first section, the 20 meter part. Since this is a balanced dipole, the legs should be the same on both sides. On the outside of the antenna, you're gonna put in these um, fitted connectors. You can use any connector you really want. I just use these pins like you'd find on old computer equipment when you put the pins together, but you can use any kind of connector you want. Since this is going to be a linked dipole, we need to have the entire length the same size for a 40 meter dipole. The linked part of the dipole is going to be for 40 meters. And that section, the remaining section, is gonna be 32 feet, nine and a half inches. And at the end of it, where I wrap it around itself, that distance, it's gonna be folded back on itself to 32 feet, five and a half inches. So you're gonna fold back about four inches roughly. Your measurement will be different depending on what kind of wire you have and what, how high off the ground it is and that sort of thing. But this will just get you started. Okay, so now that you've got the measurements and the wire cut, whatever wire you're using, and depending on the thickness of wire, these measurements will be just a little bit different. So refer to an antenna building chart to get the measurements that you need for you. The center of the antenna where the two wires, the black and the red meet, go into this BNC connector. And I just strip back enough wire so that I can wrap the wire around the BNC connector and shove it through the hole and tighten it down. That's gonna be secure enough to keep that wire from pulling out later on. I also drilled a hole in this BNC connector so I could put some uh, string in there, some paracord, and I wrapped a little paracord to make a loop so that I can hang it on top of whatever antenna I want. I just make a little knot and then drag that up to the top so I don't need a pulley or anything. And that's how you would pull this antenna up to whatever mast you're using. To keep these two sections of the dipole together when it's up in the air as a 40 meter dipole, I use fishing string and I'm using fishing line of 50 pound test. I just tied knots around them so they wouldn't slip, nothing fancy there. And I, used the, I made it so that the fishing line is what's going to hold the tension doing some sort of a HF. So now we got the antenna hooked up to the center conductor, the center insulator with the BNC, the female BNC on the inside and the two wires connected to the banana connectors on the top of the antenna. And to unfold it, I just take these line winders and I pull the string out, uh, making the line winder go up and down, up and down, and it ferries out the wire or string very easily. And at the end of the antenna, when I reach the folded over part, that's where I tie on this paracord. I use two different kinds of paracord. Um, in this particular case, I'm showing you two different colors that I use for different occasions. And sometimes I use them all on the same occasion. But the one, the orange one here is a hundred pound test. That's pretty amazing. There's no way I'm gonna get hundred pounds worth of pressure, but it's super lightweight and it'll fit into a tree. Generally what I put is 20 feet of this line at each end so that I can reach a tree or a bush at, at the other end. And I may need to add more onto that when I'm out in the field to reach a tree or a branch or something like that when I'm actually on a summit. I'm not sure exactly where I got this paracord. It's been a long time, but I'll put a link in the description below for the websites that sell this particular material. So now you've got the antenna center conductor. You've got the two legs 
of the antenna connected to the BNC and you've got the ends sprawled out and unwound from the wire winder. And the wire winder, by the way, is a great way to anchor your end of your antenna into a tree. You don't have to tie any fancy knots, but just shoving that wire winder into a bush or a branch is often plenty to hold it from moving. Keep in mind, this antenna is not for a permanent installation. This is for something portable where you're in the park, you may be on a mountain, or something like that. The last part of this antenna is the coax feed. I'm using some RG174. It's very thin. It is high loss, but it's for HF, so it's not going to make a difference. And I've tested some thicker um, cable, and those also work just about the same. I don't notice any perceivable loss while I'm out there. I'm only using 25 feet of this cable, and that's plenty long because my masts that I put up in the field are usually 21 feet tall. So I can sit at the bottom of my mast, plug my antenna right into the radio, and start operating. The BNC connector from this cable plugs right into the end of the antenna and I'm good to go. I raise up the mast and now I can start operating. So Mac, this is my summiting, uh, primary summiting antenna that I like to use. It's very reliable. I can guarantee I get a contact with that. It's easy to set up. I know it's going to work. The best part about this antenna is that there's no tuning required. Once you dial this antenna in to where you want to operate from, it always stays there. You can count on it always being the same when you get out into the field. All right, that's my quick video for you, Mac, on the 20, 40 meter length dipole. I hope this helps you in some portable operations that you might do. 7-3, catch you later.